Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us here today. Um, I'm Dr. Kimberly Thaggard. I am the Western Director for iTeach. Uh, in the state of Nevada, we are the only CAPE accredited ARL program. Um, if you have folks out there that want to get certified, uh, they have an undergraduate degree, send them my way. Uh, we take uh, very talented individuals and turn them into excellent teachers. I could not be more excited today. I am here with the Nevada Teacher of the Year from Washoe County School District. I have Connie Hall, and I could not be more honored. Thank you so much for being here today with me, Connie. Thank you. <laughs> so before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, well, I am originally from the East Coast. I'm an East Coast girl. I was born in Maryland, grew up in Pennsylvania. Um, went lived in several states but I have home means Nevada right now so I've been out here for the past um, 14 years and I love it out here I'm still um, all these coasts so go Philadelphia Eagles hopefully on the, <laughs> on the Super Bowl oh they're coming but, up this weekend that's right I know this is exciting but just traveled um, a lot lived in several states went to school down south where I met my husband in June, it'll be 30 years. Hey, that we've been married. Hey, yes. nice. and we, we have a son, he is married. And today my grandbaby is 14 months old and she's wow. amazing. Oh, I lots, love of blessings, lots of blessings, lots of blessings. Yes, yes. That's amazing, that's amazing. Um, so tell me, when did you first know you wanted to teach? That had to have been back in the 70s. And I first I wanted to be a truck driver and I thought that was really cool. I used to Thanks. like Jay and the Bear, um, the show that would come on Saturday night. And I oh, thought yeah. that would be cool to travel around the country and drive a truck. I didn't know if I would want to have like the little chimpanzee, but I wanted <laughs> I love driving. But my mom um was is was a school teacher and that didn't go over right with she and my dad about me wanting to be a truck driver. <laughs> but I started teaching my stuffed animals and my teddy bears, and they were the smartest stuffed animals and teddy bears in the neighborhood. <laughs> and after doing that, I would go to school. And if I would finish my work, I wanted to help other kids. And I realized in elementary school, I had a way to help students that kind of had a challenge and I could help them understand. And that was the um, that was the time in elementary school, and I said, "This is what I want to do for my career." That's amazing. Yeah, I think that um, all of us educators, twenty year educator myself, I think the setting up of the uh, stuffed animals and uh, mm -hmm. disciplining them, even putting them in the corner, and then also making sure they got all their math problems was, you That's know, right. I think that was a rite of passage for all of us. You know. Um, I know. So tell me about a little bit about your age group and, and those particular kids and why you enjoy teaching that age group so much. Well, this is very interesting because when I started my teaching career, um, officially in 1994, I started working with kids in uh, 84. And then 94, I began that and I wanted to teach kindergarten. And I was like, okay, this is my love. And I got away from kindergarten and taught other ages. So I wait till I get in my fifties to go back to kindergarten. <laughs> to go back. So back so to basics, little, back to basics. I know. I was like, Oh, I wait till I get up in this age to go back, but I love it. So I work with five-year-olds, usually five turning six year olds um, with kindergarten. And I love it. That was the whole reason when I went to college in the first place, because I wanted to teach kindergarten. I liked um, the younger grades. There's so many times people were saying they're babies. And I, and I felt that even though they were young, that they could do amazing things. And I had, and I would, I motivated them. And I was like, I believe that they can do that. And they believe whatever you, um, if you believe in them, then they believe that they can do it. So I was so excited um, about coming back after 2020, 21 school year, I was yeah. asked to teach distance learning. So I had kindergarten in first grade, 34, I started off with virtually for a school year. Wow. And I said, I want to come back and I'm loving it right now. I have 24 of them, but I can imagine doing anything else. So until I hit to retirement, I think this is what I'm going to do. That's great. That's great. I think all of us kind of have a calling to the age that we that we end up yeah. teaching. I, mm -hmm. I was with the high school 
uh, kids still enjoy being around high schoolers and, and mm-hmm. teaching them when I when I have the, that opportunity. So, what do you think, particularly right now, post COVID? You brought up um, even in the twenty first century with access to technology and media um, and everything else that I think is. Um, I guess, communicated about education. What do you think is one of the biggest misconceptions about teaching? (laughs) One of the biggest that I feel is that teachers, about them having a lot of time off, that is the biggest misconception because they see the school year and they see the summer vacation and the breaks, but not realizing that to do the level of work that teachers do we're working through summer vacation. We're working through the breaks because we want to be prepared for our students. And there's not um, a way to do that just during your contract hours. And they don't understand that your contract hours, you're teaching, especially elementary. And if they go to a special for 30 minutes, that's not really a prep time to do a lot of planning. So your planning and all of that comes after hours. And I was like, that was... Um, one that I think that people are like, oh, well, you have all of this time, but the majority of my breaks and summer are preparing yeah. for school. <laughs> yeah. To be a master teacher, you, you have to make that, that investment of time. Absolutely. Yes, right. mm-hmm. Absolutely. So this next part of our interview is kind of more rapid fire. Um, okay. I'm going to ask you three different questions. Um, who was your favorite teacher? My favorite teacher, I would have to say was my mom. I went to a small school. So it was like the Little House in the Prairie School. It was a multi-grade school. So at first we had two classrooms. It was one to four and five to eight. So my mother was my teacher for grades five to eight. And so it was, um, that was because that's all I did was spent my life around a classroom. And then I had her officially for my teacher for those four years. And I just um, enjoyed that. And looking back, she was a master at multi-grade education and how she could keep all the grades going um, at that time. So she was one of, um, one of my favorites. That's awesome. That's awesome. Who inspires you now? Who inspires me now? I think, look, my students that I want to see them do their best in the students that I teach. So that inspires me to continue to take myself up to other levels. Because if I feel, if I just stay stagnant, stagnant, I'm not going to help my students to grow. So I'm always um, looking for new ideas. So my students and those that I work with and actually my student that I'm mentoring now on our way, that inspires me because if I'm going to help the next generations that are coming, I need to stay up on top. I can't, I, you know, there are things that I may still do that I started out in the nineties when I was teaching, but I need to move, um, to come up with the times that I'm in at right now. Right, right. And their day to day and what they're experiencing certainly right. influences that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, what are your aspirational goals? My aspiration and goals. I want to continue teaching. You know, I have others ask me other things, but I don't know. I feel that my colleagues in the classroom, I do want to, I'm in the process of getting uh, my first children's book published. Yes, and nice. as I said, I like to give back to the young people. So it's actually um, a young person in our area, the Reno Sparks area. She is a junior in high school, amazing artist. And I just met with her the other week and she's going to do the illustrations for my children's book. So ways that I can do things and empower um, others. So I want to, to do some more writing. And I think some of the things, the ideas that I have, it's time to get them off of my laptop and start sharing. So I have to get out of my comfort zone a little bit because yeah. it's going to take me, um, you know, in front of others and doing things. But I want to write. I want to go around and do some, motiv- you know, motivating others. And I want to motivate teachers and I want to mo- motivate um, young people to see what do they want to be when they grow up and try to connect them with a mentor. Because I really feel that if a student just say my um, Madison here, she wanted to be a teacher. So now she's working with me. She's seeing the things that I'm doing. 
she has a reason when she goes to school. Okay, well, these are the expectations of a teacher and that helps her to stay focused in her day-to-day -day basis. So when I'm working with other kids, if they want to be a doctor, okay, get a doctor in the area kind of work with this person and they'll see, oh, I need to be serious in school because I have a lot to do. And I think that can help um, kind of curb some other things that students may get off track in school because they're working with somebody that is where they want to be. That's one of the things I always tell our I teach candidates, you know, some they, they take their first two courses with us and then they take their practice exam and then they're in a classroom for their first year. And they say, maybe I should have taken more classes. And I tell them, I was alternatively certified. I'm here 20 years later as an educator and a PhD. And I can tell you right now, I learned more in that classroom about what it meant to be a great teacher than I ever learned from any paper that I ever wrote. Mm -hmm. um, I think, if, yeah, I think if your aspirations and goals are to, you know, spread your wings beyond the classroom, you're, you're certainly well on your way. Um, I want to thank you so much for being with me here today. Um, us at I Teach Nevada, we are going to send you a $100 Amazon gift card for oh. you to spend on your classroom or your students you. or any way you see fit. We love to encourage great teaching, and you certainly model that uh, for us and obviously for all the other teachers of Nevada. So thank you again, Connie. It was great talking thank to you. you. All, all right. right. Nice talking with you as well. Take care. See you later. Bye.